This week's show is sponsored by Celebrate Vitamins, providing the optimum level of vitamin and mineral supplementation that's tasty and affordable. Get all of your favorite Celebrate products at CelebrateVitamins.com. This week's episode of Bariatric TV is sponsored by Bariatric Advantage, the most complete line of micronutrient replacements specifically designed for the weight loss surgery patient. Help support the show by ordering your Bariatric Advantage products directly from the BTV eStore. Hi, I'm Tony. And I'm Linda. And we're here to bring you another fun-filled episode. Well, at least we have fun making it for you. We can only hope you have fun watching it. So what do we have for you this week? Watch it! You might get splattered by our drop zone Getting to the gym is all in the prep. Oh my god! That dog's obese! And a great crock pot recipe for pork. You know, the other white meat. Drop Zone Freak is the Prince of Protein, the Earl of Edible Excitement, the man who put the keen in quinoa. Yep, this week's Drop Zone Freak is Rob Portinga, otherwise known as McNee. Rob's been a longtime viewer of BTV, an even longer time weekend warrior who ravages the field of play with splattering paint filled balls. <laughs> His reason for why he's glad he had surgery, he simply wrote, if I have to limit this to just one sentence, I'll have to go with paintball paintball and more paintball. For those that don't know, Rob's a bit of a paintball fanatic. Thanks Rob for playing along with us through the years. You really have added a lot to what BTV is. Now don't forget to send your address and phone number so Revival Soy can send you some awesome soy snacks. Rob, I challenge you to use a soy snack in one of your new recipes. And while Rob is doing that, we'll head on over to the dumping ground. We've thrown down the soy chip gauntlet. The gauntlet has been thrown. <laughs> I don't feel good. Welcome to the dumping ground. So recently I had an email exchange with one of our viewers. She was concerned about her weight loss because she couldn't seem to find the motivation to get to the gym. We know I hate the gyms, so I can understand. But as a WLS patient, you still have to find a way to get in some type of exercise. Now I know people are always telling you that part of getting off your butt and moving your ass is finding things to motivate you. You've been told a hundred times, at least, that exercise will help you to lose weight faster. It'll help with filling out the saggy baggy extra skin with muscle. It will lead to a wonderful relationship where you can leave your life as a common prostitute as you're swept away by a world traveling rich billionaire who sees the true diamond in the rough that is you. 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 Been watching Pretty Woman again, have you? Uh, yeah. Sorry. Didn't mean to insinuate that any of you were common prostitutes. With the exception of, I don't know, Ian? Sorry. Baka, you common prostitute, you. <laughs> well, I submit for your approval a summation on this question of motivation when it comes to exercise. Well, in that case, commence to summarize in, girlfriend. Girl. Maybe it doesn't have anything to do with your motivation to get to the gym, but everything to do with the things that keep you from getting there. Uh, okay, that's gonna take some spelaining. Dody, you got some spelaining to do! After talking to many posties, I found that one of the biggest roadblocks to getting into the gym is time. Speaking of roadblock, where the hell is he? <laughs> What's happening to roadblock? I know. I hear it over and over again. I just don't have the time. Yep, we're such busy people with taking care of our families, working, kids, sports, and hobbies, socializing, homework, housework, and watching pretty women that making time to get to the gym seems to lose priority. Um, I think you should probably do that and say watching pretty women, because if you say watching pretty women, it sounds like <laughs> you have a thing for watching hey, pretty women. Baby. <laughs> Well, we're here to tell you that you need to make it a high priority and you need to make getting there something easy to do. For me, making it a priority includes putting it on my daily calendar. Whether on my phone or on my computer, it's on my schedule. Right there with my work meetings, doctor appointments, and BTV shoots. And don't allow anyone to schedule over it. Nope, not gonna happen. My health is a number one priority. Okay, so I get that putting it on your schedule is important. But I'm so dang busy and have so much going on in my head that I forget to prepare for the gym. Honestly, I have found for me that if I prep for the gym, I'm more likely to go. So I started the habit every Sunday night. I get my gym stuff prepped for the week, put it in my gym bag, and put the gym bag next to the front door. So I don't conveniently forget to take it with me in the morning. This way I always have my gym stuff with me and ready to go. Wow, are you like carrying around a suitcase with you all week long? That's gotta be a lot of stuff. 
No, not really. You just have to find the right gym bag. And I have to tell you a little secret. I feel so athletic and superior when I'm walking around with my gym bag. Okay, superior athletic Tony, what's next? First, figure out how many times you want to exercise that week and pack for it. I hit the gym three times a week, and here's what's in my bag. One pair of good shoes, I love Asics. Three pairs of socks, three pairs of pants, three big t-shirts, because I like comfort, one small towel, extra deodorant, a water bottle, and a small makeup kit, because I don't want to use the excuse of I can't possibly exercise because I have to be somewhere else and I don't want to look bad. That's not so much. And you say you put this by your front door so you won't forget it when you leave? Yeah, because honestly, I'll submarine myself if I don't. So there you have it, freaks. A couple of ways to combat the I don't have enough time for the gym excuse. And as for the other excuses you may have, write them down and then see if you can find creative ways to address them. Getting in your exercise is just as important in your life as taking your vitamins. And you know as well as I do that when you were pre-op, you promised yourself you'd do it. So no more excuses, people. Move your ass. And in the meantime, we'll alter your reality. Welcome to Altered Reality. Hey Tony, what you got there? Well this is Pebbles, the production dog. And what are you doing with production dog Pebbles? Well I'm just explaining to her that I can no longer share my cheese sticks with her. What? No cheese for Pebbles? Um, do you see her? She doesn't need any more freaking cheese. She's an obese puppy and I'm afraid it's my fault. How is that your fault? Well, in my sick little brain I would eat a cheese stick but then I would share it with the dogs. Then I would tell myself that I wasn't really having a snack, just a bite, because technically it wasn't a whole cheese stick. And after doing that enough, I created this. But you said you only gave her a bite. A bite for a human, maybe, but for her it's probably like a meal, two or three bites a day, and well, just look at her. And you're telling us this because? Well, I was actually talking to a freaky friend of mine, and she mentioned that her dog had gained a lot of weight after she had surgery because she was sharing her food. And that's when I realized that I was doing the same thing. Poor little obese puppy. Do they have weight loss surgery for dogs? No, I don't think so. But obesity is just as bad for doggies as it is for us. Did you know an estimated 51.5% of dogs and cats in the United States are overweight or obese? That's an estimated 89 million US dogs and cats. Poor puppies and kitties. And did you also know that the risks from obesity in dogs and cats are very similar to those in humans? They include osteoarthritis, insulin resistance and type 2 diabetes, high blood pressure, heart and respiratory disease, cranial cruciate ligament injury, kidney disease, and many forms of cancer. If you're interested in more on this topic, there's a website out there at petobesityprevention.com. It has pages on ideal pet weight ranges, caloric needs for your pet, and even a diagram for checking your pet's weight. I'm sorry, Pebs. I feel horrible for what I've done. I'm sure you and your friend didn't mean your pets any harm, but this is one thing Posty should watch out for. Oftentimes, those around us will get the extra food we aren't eating, and that includes your dogs and cats. Pebbles, you're now on a doggy diet. Less food and more walks for you, my girl. <laughs> she looks excited about that, happy about that one. Well, hold on, Tony. Before you and Pebbles go walking off, we need to freak on. Welcome to the Freak On segment. Hey, you know St. Patty's Day is coming up. Cool, I've got just the recipe for it. Really? Is it green? No. Does it have corned beef in it? No. Cabbage? No. Potatoes, maybe? No. Then how the hell is it a St. Patty's Day recipe? Because it has the Spanish word for green in the name. Yeah, that's a really big stretch, dear. But if Huge you stretch. Huge. Ginormous. It's going to go right off camera. Huge stretch. <laughs> but if you promise it's good, I'll let you get away with it. I got this recipe from my friend Chris Cook, who made it for our Super Bowl Sunday party. And it was so good, I decided to share it. It's quick and simple pork verde. 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 I cannot roll my tongue, so I apologize. Here's what you'll need. Two to four pounds of pork, depending on how big of a crowd you plan on feeding. I'm using the pork tenderloins from Costco. I've cut them into inch squares and browned them. One large chopped onion, about a teaspoon of minced garlic, and the secret ingredients is one can of green or verde enchilada sauce. This is the easiest recipe I've done for you. Watch. 
basically dump in the pork. Dump in the onion. Dump in the garlic. And dump in the enchilada sauce. Cook on low for six to eight hours, and there you go, pork verde. Now for me, I like to serve it over some quinoa, but it's also good as a taco filler or a burrito filler. All right, here we are six hours later and it's finally done. Really easy, but it takes a long time. Let's give it a try. Mmm, smells really good. Mmm, that was so good. So she's wearing green to match me. <laughs> That's right, I'm trying to match Tony's um, odd little shamrock thing. <laughs> Either way. Hey, you can make this corned beef and cabbage too. <laughs> Hi, Chihuahua. It's the end of the show already. Yep, we are done for this week. <laughs> He's all done. He's there's, all done. There's He's no all more. gone. There's no more to do. <laughs> We're getting letters from anybody with the last name Gonzalez this week. <laughs> Be sure to visit us at thebtvstore.com to order up all your bariatric goodies. And if you haven't already, jump on the forum. It's a great place to interact with other freaks. Oh, and check in next week. We have some awesome new giveaways coming up. Ta-ta for now, my little freaky freaks. My little chickadee. Oftentimes, those around us will get the extra food we are not eating. <laughs> no, we are not eating. The food. The extra food. Hey, the pork dish you can't pronounce. Pork verde. Verde. Ver Shut up. Verde. Verde. You have to roll the R. I don't. Pork verde. It's <laughs> not going to happen. Uh, it's called the pork verde. Pork verde. <laughs> All right. Just so you know, I keep scratching my nose because there's dogs and cats and birds here and I'm allergic. I'm not a coke fiend. <laughs>